Good morning. Good to see all of you here. Glad to be here with you today. If you have a hymnal, turn to hymn number 259, Jesus Saves. Those of you watching at home on Facebook, uh, you all that know this, Jesus Saves. We are going to do the first, second, and the last. to go to the Preacher's Delight Conference hosted by Emmanuel Baptist Church in Jacksonville, Florida, and uh, had a lot of good preaching. It was really good. It was really a blessing. And so we're thankful that we had that opportunity, and we are glad to be back here with all of you. All right. Any other praises? Thank you for the zoo. Thankful for the zoo. Amen. I, you know what? I appreciate that. I like the zoo, too. Oh. Yes, praise the Lord. The Lord saw fit uh, to give Miss Beth and I a little dog. And uh, it's an interesting story, the way he came to live in our house. And... Uh, the hardest thing for me was to come up with a name, and I've settled on a name. The family doesn't even know the name. I wanted to be scriptural, so I decided to go with moreover. You read about him in Luke. Moreover the dog? Amen? All right. Actually, his name is Scout. But, uh, his name is Scout. His name is Scout. But I like moreover. Right? Or moreover. Moreover, there you go. You know what kind? Oh, he's part uh, Jack Russell. If not all, he's 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 a juvenile. He's, no, no, I think he's he's Jack Russell and maybe another terrier. I don't know a whole lot about Jack Russell. But this dog points. I don't know if 
Jack Russell's or pointers or not, but Scout is. Good reason to call him Scout. Over there! But, uh, but uh, he, he's, he's still a puppy. We don't know how old he is. Uh, but he's got those razor sharp puppy teeth. And he, he's got that puppy affliction where if he sees your hand, he wants to chew on it. Oh, right. And furniture and all that comes next. Well, no, we're trying to. I've been watching some YouTube videos on how to break him of that. Now I just got to get him to watch the videos. <laughs> <laughs> That's the hard part. Right. <laughs> all right. Uh, unspoken prayer request. Most everyone. Specific prayer requests. My grandson and granddaughter. Grandson and granddaughter for salvation. Uh, please be praying for Miss Beth. She's not here today. She's a little under the weather. Okay, Dakota, you raised your hand. Um, well, we'd like to say for our sons to them there that their families have all gotten through their little bout with the virus. Okay. Continue to pray for them that they'll continue to get over it. Okay. Okay. You need to pray for Victoria and the baby. Yes, ma'am. And Angie, our daughter, will have knee replacement on Thursday. Knee replacement for Angie on Thursday. <laughs> Definitely need to be praying for her. Well, they say they're going, she's going home. Right yeah, they say it's, you know, outpatient. I don't think it's you know, a good idea. <laughs> it's scary sometimes. Yeah, she's scared. All right. Yes, ma'am. Um, yes, for um, friends that are expecting, and then for a friend of mine whose husband's still needing a job, um, that the Lord would just work there. Yes. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Um, for a friend of mine or nephew, I can't remember, I don't want to say his own name, um, but he is three years old and he just got diagnosed with a really rare blood disorder. Um, like lots of different things going wrong with all of the blood. Um, so we're trying to figure out what to do. Okay. Little three year old diagnosed with a rare blood disorder. So, need to pray that the doctors will have wisdom to know how to treat and for God's presence. Brother Billy, we got that other prayer request for you. Thank you. Can I, can I say it? Or? Sure. Brother Billy's been diagnosed with cancer um, in his leg, and right now the information is very preliminary. Uh, so, just be praying that. You know, uh, he's not seen an oncologist yet, so he's, he's got that uh, to do. And my prayer is that when he gets to the oncologist, they say, uh, listen, we don't find anything. Somebody made a mistake Amen. somewhere. And God's able to do that. Amen. So, all right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we do thank you so much. For the praises that we are able to tell one another of. We know that you are worthy of praise. We know that you are the God who hears and answers prayer. And we bring these requests to you. A lot of um, issues with health. And we just trust you. That you will give the doctors wisdom. That they will have clear understanding of the best way to treat each and every one of these different situations. We want to pray specifically uh, for Brother Billy. Uh, getting this news that, Lord, you would comfort him, that you would make your presence known to him like only you can. And we do pray that as he goes to the doctor that uh, we would love to have a, the doctor say, I'm sorry, a misdiagnosis. But most of all, we want your will to be done. Yes, now, as Tommy comes with the Sunday school, we ask that you'd help us be attentive and that you would uh, help us to receive that which you have for us. And we ask this in your precious and holy name. Amen. Amen. And I'll receive this nice call. Give it everybody. I'll come back. Give it everybody. All right. If you would, take your Bibles and go to Joshua chapter 8. 
Joshua chapter 8. Joshua 8, and we are going to continue looking at the conquering of the promised land, and we're going to go through Joshua 8 this morning and possibly get into chapter 9, but Joshua chapter 8. And we're going to start reading in verse number 1. And the Lord said unto Joshua, Fear not, neither be thou dismayed. Take all the people of war with thee, and arise, go up to Ai. See, I have given it, given into thine hand the king of Ai and his people, and his city and his land. And thou shalt do to Ai and her king, as thou didst unto Jericho and her king, only the spoil thereof and the cattle thereof. <clears throat> shall ye take for prey unto yourselves. Lay ye, I'm sorry, lay thee in ambush for the city behind it. So, uh, in Joshua, uh, start of Joshua 7, what we looked at last week, we seen um, Joshua had led the people into an attack of AI. And remember, the he sent spies, and the spies came back and said, we don't need to send the whole army into AI, AI. Small, we'll be able to take them. Well, there was sin in the camp, and Ai defeated um, Joshua and had sent them running. So now this is the, the second go-around with Ai. And the Lord is, has come to Joshua and told him, fear not. So my, I have, my question is this. Why do you think the Lord told Joshua to fear not? Because <coughs> he'd already failed one time already. I'm sorry? He already went one time and failed. Yeah, after that... Last time they faced AI and they lost 36 men. Um, I think they had reason to fear. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? I think I think uh, everyone maybe maybe Joshua thought you know okay we just got rid of this one but is there something else that I don't know about before I send them out there because I don't want it to happen again. Right. Maybe God's like saying hey. Everything's good now. <clears throat> and I and, and I agree with what everyone has said. You know, it can be it can be scary when you feel you know the Lord has led you to do something and you've tried it before and you fail, right? But then the Lord is saying, "Listen, you're going to do it again." It can be a little bit nerve wracking to say, "Okay, I'm going to do this again," and I've already failed once, you know. And I and I agree. You know, the Lord was saying, Joshua. You don't need to fear. You don't have reason to fear. I have given AI to you. You are going to beat AI this time. And, I, and like Nathaniel said, you know, he's, he's already gotten, he's taken care of Achan and, and the sin of Achan, right? Now, you know, maybe in the back of his mind he was thinking, all right, is there, is there something else I don't know about? You know, is there, is there more hidden in the camp somewhere that, that someone else has lied about, you know, and that they, they didn't, admit, you know? And, and I can understand all those points that Joshua was thinking, you know, the point of, you know, there's more in the camp, you know, that... You know, we did this once, but we lost 36 men, you know, to, to little Ai. You know, but the Lord comes to Joshua and he says, Fear not, neither be thou this may. You know, he's, uh, he says, take, take all the people of war with thee, and arise and go up to Ai. See, I have given into thy hand the king of Ai and his people and his city and his land. And the Lord tells Joshua, <laughs> gives him a, a little bit of a plan. He says, Joshua, you're going to sit up an ambush for Ai. And, and so now we see in, <clears throat> excuse me, verse, uh, verse three. We're gonna read uh, three through about verse eight. So Joshua rose with all the people of war to go up against Ai, and Joshua chose out thirty thousand mighty men of valor and sent them away by night. And he commanded them, saying, Behold, ye shall lie in wait against the city. Even behind the city, go not very far from the city, but be ye all ready. And I and all the people that are with me will approach unto the city, and shall come to pass that when they come out against us <clears throat> at first, that we will flee before them. For they will come out after us, 
till we have drawn them from the city, and they will say, They flee before us as at, as at the first, therefore we will flee before them. Then ye shall rise up from the ambush and seize upon the city, for the Lord your God will deliver it into your hand. And it shall be when ye have taken the city, that ye shall set the city on fire, according to the commandment of the Lord, shall ye do. See, I have commanded you. So Joshua takes 30,000 <coughs> mighty men. And that's just a, a small portion of the army that they have, right? You know, and he takes 30,000 men and says, listen, you guys are going to go out and go behind the city. Now, I don't know how AI was positioned. I don't know if they were sitting up on a hill like Jericho was or what. But you think it would be hard to miss a small mass of 30,000 men, right, <laughs> moving around. I mean, you know, we, when, let's see, what was it, last, I think it was last year or year before, when we went to, it was last year when we went to Kentucky to see my family, we had stopped and, and seen Victoria and them, and they took us to a little museum in, in Tennessee for the kids to, it was a hands-on museum the kids got to play around and have fun with. And they had a little tower you could go up, and we went up in that little tower, and we're looking around, and you know, even from that, that little tower that was probably only 35, 40 feet up, right, I could see a lot. And, and, and as before, these cities, these cities had high walls, you know, and it was, I could see a lot in the, in the Chattanooga area from that little, that little tower I was in, I could look around and I could see a lot. And that's what I'm saying is it would be hard to miss a mass of 30,000 soldiers. I mean, I don't think you could move modern-day 30,000 soldiers without a satellite somewhere picking it up. You know, now they didn't have that kind of technology, you know, where they could say, okay, we've got this, you know, they're moving here. You know, but he, he tells them to go at night, and they move under the cover of night, and they get into position. And they, they set the ambush, and Joshua tells them, what we're going to we're gonna kind of do like last time. I'm going to take a small group, <clears throat> excuse me, and we're going to go. To the, to the front, and we're going to attack, and then we're going to run away like before, and they're going to have that confidence of like, hey, we're, we, we did this to them last time, we're running, let's, let's go after them this time and finish them off, and then when we draw everyone away, you guys are going to rush the city, take over the city, and set it on fire as the Lord has commanded you. So verse number 9, Joshua therefore set them forth, sent them forth, and they went to lie in ambush, and abode between Bethel and Ai, on the west side of Ai. But Joshua lodged that night among the people. And Joshua rose up early in the morning, and numbered the people, and went up, and he and the elders of Israel, before the people to Ai. And the people, even the people of war that were with him, went up, and drew nigh, and came before the city, and pitched on the north side of Ai. Now there was a valley between them and Ai. So we're going to stop there for a minute. And I, and I asked... I, I want to ask you this question. In uh, verse number 9, at the end of verse 9, it says Joshua lodged that night with the people. Why do you think Joshua stayed with his people? <coughs> Why do you think Joshua lodged with the people instead of going back and, and, and staying? To give them um, confidence that everything's going to be okay. Right. Right, and I and I agree with that, you know. And it, and yes, sir. Did you? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, and, and, and that's the, a reminder to me, because I imagine Joshua was a little nervous, right? I mean, so to speak, this is that 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 we've read. This is the first ambush he's set, you know. And something could go terribly wrong with this ambush, right? Someone could not go forward, you know. Maybe they, you know, he doesn't know if they've got a plan set. Well, hey, we need so many people to watch the back side of the city, right? To make sure they don't do something like this. You know, I imagine Joshua had a little bit of nerves, you know, but he probably seen that in his men too. His men probably were like, We Joshua, we have we have confidence in your leadership and we and we're trusting the Lord, but this is still a little unnerving, you know, on, on how this is gonna work. And, and like Mashila said, I, I believe Joshua stayed with them to give them comfort and to give them confidence. And I love that the Lord gives me that same kind of comfort and gives me that same kind of confidence when, you know, as, as, you know, as the Bible says, what time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. You know, when I have uneasy nerves and, and I'm unsettled, that I can say, Lord, I'm trusting you. I, I believe you're going to do something, Lord, but I'm still, 
I've got those nerves, you know, I just, I've, I've got the, so to speak, the pregame jitters, you know, I've got the butterflies, you know, and I'm excited to see what's going to happen, you know, and the Lord is, it's there, and he says everything is going to be all right, as, as Philippians tells us, we have that peace that passes all understanding, and, and the Lord comforts. So, uh, verse 12, and he took about 5,000 men and set them to lie in ambush between Bethel and Ai on the west side of the city. And when they had set the people, even all the hosts that were was on the north of the city, that their layers, that their liars in wait on the west side of the city, Joshua went that night into the midst of the valley. So Joshua now takes another small group of five thousand men and puts them in this little valley that's between Ai and Bethel, and, and says, "Listen, you guys are also going to be another part of that ambush." You know, we're we're he's. I think Joshua was making sure, listen, if someone catches this group coming in from, from the back, listen, I'm going to send you guys in, you know, and they're not going to be expecting, maybe they don't expect that. But I would just, he's trying to cover all of his bases. So verse, excuse me, verse 14 is where we're going to start reading again. Verse 14, and it came to pass when the king of Ai saw that they hasted and rose up early and the men of the city went out against Israel to battle. He and all his people at the time appointed before the plan, but the he wits not that there were liars in ambush against him behind the city. And Joshua and all of Israel made as it as they were beaten before them and fled by way of the wilderness. And all the people that were in Ai were called together to pursue after them and they pursued Joshua and were drawn away from the city. And there was not a man left in Ai or Bethel that went not after Israel. And they left the city <coughs> open and pursued after Israel. And the Lord said unto Joshua, Stretch out the spear that is in thy hand toward Ai, for I will give thee into thine hand. And Joshua stretched out the spear that was in his hand, that he had, I'm sorry, in his hand toward the city. And the ambush arose quickly out of their place, and they ran as soon as they had stretched out the hand, his hand. And they entered into the city, and took it, and hasted, and set, and set it the city on fire. And when the men of Ai looked behind them, they saw, and behold, the smoke of the city ascended up to heaven. And they had no power to flee this way or that way. And the people that fled to the wilderness turned back upon the pursuers. So Joshua has, has set the battle plan in motion, right? And the king of Ai sees this, and he's caught off surprise. You know, he's, he's caught, you know, I think maybe the king of Ai thought, we beat Israel once, they're not coming back. You know, we have stopped the, the mighty Israelites. <coughs> we, we've stopped them. And then all of a sudden, he, he wakes up in the morning, maybe he's walking about the wall of the city or whatnot, enjoying his cup of coffee, and he sees everyone coming. You know, and he he sounds the battle cry. He says they're coming back. They, they, they we're we need to go to battle now and start sending his men out to 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 fight with Israel. And Joshua's plan starts working. He's they see them coming, and Joshua tells his men retreat, fall back, and they they begin to fall back. And I think the king of Ai had it in his head that he he said, listen, I'm not having this happen again. We're settling this once and for all. And he and I, and the Bible doesn't say, but I believe he tells his men, don't come back until they're all gone. Wipe them all out, take care of them, that way we ain't got to do this again. And when that begins to happen, they get so far out, and the Lord says, Joshua, tells Joshua, set the, set the, put the plan in motion. Send in the, the rest of the men, send in the ambush, and, and Joshua stretches out his spear as the Lord commands him, and, and, and the men that were in the ambush sees the city, take it over and set it on fire. And the men of Ai see that. And the Bible says in verse 20, And when the men of Ai looked behind them and saw, and behold, the smoke of the city ascended up to heaven, they had and they had no power to flee. Ai lost their fight right then and there. I mean, the wind completely left the, the, the sails of Ai. You know, and that, let it be a reminder to us that everything may seem to be going well, but something can happen that can take the wind out of our sails if we lose focus. Yeah. You know, 
Just because everything seems to be going well doesn't mean we need to take our eye off of God and, and, and say, Lord, you know, I everything's going well now. You've been doing so good, but I think I can take it from here. You know, we, we need to, to keep our focus and, and not lose the, the wind in our sails. You know, because as we see here, AI seen that have seen their city burning. You know, they probably heard the cries of, of their family back in the city. And they were like, there's there's really nothing we can do now. They, they've lost their will to fight. And they seen there was nowhere they could they could retreat to, right? The Bible tells us that, continuing on in verse 20, uh, they had no power to flee this way or that way. And the people that fled into the wilderness turned back upon the pursuers. <clears throat> verse 21. And when Joshua and all the... And all of Israel saw the ambush had taken the city, and the smoke of the city ascended. And then they turned again and slew the men of Ai, and the other issued out, issued out of the city against them. So they were in the midst of Israel, some on this side and some on that side, and they smote them so that they let none of them remain, let none of them remain or escape. And the king of Ai they took alive and brought him to Joshua. And it came to pass when Israel had made end of the slain of all the inhabitants of Ai in the field and the wilderness wherein they chased them. And when the, they were all fallen on the edge of the sword until they were consumed, that all the Israelites returned unto Ai and smote it with the edge of the sword. And so that all that fell that day that day both men and women were twelve thousand even all the men of Ai for Joshua drew not his hand drew not his hand back wherewith he stretched out the, the spear until he had utterly destroyed all the inhabitants of Ai so we see that Joshua the, the plan goes as as it was supposed to and what I found interesting when I was reading this is that AI it, 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 that we see that was was, sl was was that was slain was only twelve thousand. You know, Israel Joshua had set thirty thousand men, thirty five thousand men up in ambush. You know, I imagine AI's army for for twelve thousand. Let's say a third of it. So let's say AI only had three thousand men as soldiers. That first battle should have been a pretty even match. I mean, as far as on paper, you know, we've got man to man. You know, we got three thousand on three thousand. You know, it should be fairly easy. But just because something looks easy doesn't mean we can overestimate it. And, and we see what happens when they when Israel did overestimate AI and, and didn't consult God. They lost. They lost thirty six men and, and, and caused them to retreat. But now, when Israel is listening to the Lord and, and they, they conquered Ai and, and take over Ai. In verse 27, the Bible says, And on only the cattle and the spoil that is on that city Israel took for prey unto themselves, according to the word of the Lord, which he commanded. And Joshua burnt Ai and made it heap, and made it in heap forever, even a desolation unto this day. And the king of Ai he hanged on a tr on a tree. Until the evening tide, and as soon as the sun was down, Joshua commanded that that they should take his carcass down from a tree and cast it at the entering of the gate of the city, and rise thereon a great heap of stones that remaineth unto this day. So Joshua, the Bible says that Joshua hung the king. And I was kind of curious, you know, I got I got to thinking a little bit about it last night as I was reading through stuff. I was like, why didn't Joshua just slay the king like everyone else? You know, he hung him. And I believe, now I could be wrong, I have no Bible to back this, this is my opinion. I believe Joshua was using the king to send a message. Because it says he hung him from a tree and left him there until the evening. I believe that they hung the king that way. Anyone who may have been passing by that area, seen the king and said that they they seen the king hanging there, that it was a message to them that Israel was not going to be stopped. You know, just because they had failed once doesn't mean that they were going to let that slow them down. I believe that it was a message for anyone to see. Hey, listen, yeah, because I, I I don't 
doubt that Israel's falling to Ai the first time got out. That others, other cities began to hear about this and others, other nations began to, you know, because Ai is the smallest one we read about. 12,000 men and women in total. That's, I, if I remember looking last night, that's smaller than the town of Zephyr Hills as far as people-wise go. That's smaller than Zephyr Hills. Hmm. The, 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 you know, and they, they, they defeated the mighty Israel army. And that message got out. Yeah. And now the message is, is, is plain and clear. Just because we stumbled doesn't mean we're stopping. We're still coming. You can't, so to speak, you can't derail the train that is coming your way. They are still going to continue to march on. And they took him down. And we've seen that they got to enjoy the spoils of Ai. They got to take that for themselves. But I really want to look at, at the end of the chapter here. Verse 30. Then Joshua built an altar unto the Lord of Israel in the Mount of Ebal. As Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded the children of Israel, as it was written in the book of the law of Moses, an altar of whole stones over which no man had lift up any iron, and they offered thereon burnt offerings unto the Lord and sacrificed peace offerings. Why do you, now I know we read verse 31, but why do you think Joshua decided to make an offering there at Ai? Why do you think he decided to set up an altar there at Ai and, and, and make offerings to the Lord? To remind the people that the victory was the Lord's and not their own. Okay. Anyone else? And, and I, I agree with Pastor. It, it was for the people to see. It was for the people to know, listen, we couldn't have done this without the Lord. This was... This was all the Lord's doing. The Lord is the reason we won this battle. We've we seen what happened when we tried to do it on our own. We lost 36 men. We, we, we had sin in our camp, and we couldn't stand. But because we obeyed the Lord, we, we now have that victory. <clears throat> Verse 32. And he wrote upon... I'm sorry. Excuse me. And he wrote there upon the stones... A copy of the law of Moses, which he wrote in the presence of the children of Israel, and all Israel, and their elders and officers and their judges stood on this side of the ark and on the on that side before the priests of the Levites, which bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord, as well the stranger as he that was born among them, half of them over against Mount Gerizim. And half of them over against Mount Ebal, as Moses, the servant of the Lord, had commanded the people that they should bless the people of Israel. Joshua has been in battle all day. And I don't know how long the, the battle took, but Joshua is, after he's, he's built an altar and made sacrifices, the Bible says he wrote out, for the people to see, he wrote out the, the law of Moses. Now, what, how, what was the law of Moses? The law, the Ten Commandments. The you know he he wrote it out for the people to see. You know, you know I imagine Joshua was tired. You know, I'm not gonna lie, I would be tired after fighting all day. You know, I I don't know if I would have that kind of energy. But Joshua was doing it again as a reminder for the people. He he said before them. And then verse 34, and afterward he read all the words of the law, the blessings and the curses, according to all that was written in the book of the law, that there was not a word of all that Moses commanded, which Joshua read not before all the congregation of Israel, with the women and the little ones, and the strangers that were that were com conversant among them. Not only did Joshua write out the law, the Bible says that Joshua then turns around and reads it all to him, and then and that you know I got to, to looking at that, and I was like Joshua didn't just read, you know a little bit. The Bible says he read it all, all the words of Moses. He read to them, and all the words of Moses were Genesis through Deuteronomy. Joshua, after his his long day in battle, his his day of uh, uh, and I imagine a not a, a kind of a restless night's sleep 
not knowing what was going to happen and, and being in battle. And then he set up an altar. He wrote out the law. He then turns around and says, okay, now we're going to sit down and read. And he reads the, 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 the words of Moses to the people. The blessings and the curses. And, and everyone is there. To hear. <coughs> and I got to looking at that and it was like, that gives me no excuse. Not to, to take time for my Bible. Because John again, Joshua's been in battle all day. He's for 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 lack of a better Joshua's had a busy day. Yeah. He's yeah. he's been fairly busy. Joshua, you know, has been been doing stuff. But Joshua still made time in that busy day for the Lord. Not only that, he made sure he made time for the people to know about the Lord. Amen. You know, and that again, my day may be busy. My day may be crazy and, and hectic and, and wild, but I still have to take time in that day for the Lord. Not only for me, but I have to do it for my family as well. I have to make sure that they know about the Lord. And this this you know, this past week it was it was such a blessing <clears throat> to me to hear the preaching and stuff, but it was also a, a blessing to be able to spend that time with my family. Amen. And, and have that time centered around the Lord with my family and just stepping back from the chaos of the world, yes. you know, and, and, and the, the busy routine of, of waking up in the morning and, and spending time and then going to work, you know, and, and having to focus there. It was, it was nice to, to say, I can set that all aside and I can focus on the Lord with my family. And that's just a reminder. Again, the reminder is that no matter how busy the day may seem, you still need to set time aside for the Lord and to take time to focus on Him. So we've got just a few minutes left. We finished chapter 8. We will, you know what, we won't start chapter 9. I was going to start it, but we're not going to start chapter 9. We will save chapter 9 for next week. So you'll have to be back next week to find out what happens in chapter 9. So we will be dismissed. And for those of you who are watching online, we will be back at 11 o'clock for our morning services. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for the day you've given us. And Lord, again, I just want to thank you for allowing us to, to come and to look at your word and to spend time in it. Father, I just ask that you help us to, to learn from Israel and, and the things they did wrong and the things they did right and we can apply them to our life. Father, I just ask that you be with the morning services to come and, and remind us of your presence. These things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.